Today I'm going to be ranking silver bullion coins from best to worst. Let's get into it. How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you blast that subscribe button and get the bell notification clicked. And that way you get updated with any new content. Today, what I wanted to do is make another one of these ranking videos because I haven't done one of these on silver bullion coins. I recently did one ranking silver bullion dealers. Please feel free to check that out. But today I figured I would start looking at these silver bullion coins and I would essentially be looking at coins that had a mintage of 25,000 or more. Obviously, there are probably a lot of coins that I left off of this list I just thought of like the most common ones in most recent years and I thought that this would be a good selection um, when you start getting into uh, silver coins that are between I would say 15 to 25 to 50 thousand in terms of mintage that's when you start looking at semi numismatic coins what I wanted to do is try to keep this to coins that are heavily minted with the exception there are a few in here that have a lower mintage of 25,000 to 50,000 which I'll get into in just a bit but what am I grading these coins on I'm looking essentially at their design just aesthetics what I like does the design change from year to year uh cost over spot essentially the premiums on this particular coin the mintage of the coin and the hype so why don't we just dive right into it thank you those that watched my last video i had these uh colors backwards and they said you know the uh the green should be like the good the good one and the danger zone should be in the red 100 percent couldn't agree more i didn't even realize that that was an option all right so let's start with america's silver bullion coin the american silver eagle all right this coin has a lot of things that are going for it and things in my opinion that are working against it first off we're going to be talking about the design um there are two different uh designs though when you are talking about the american silver eagle as it relates to the reverse which i'll talk to you about in just a moment but the silver eagle been around since 1986 thing has been minted to oblivion now this design here classic design looks like the walking liberty um just beautiful beautiful coin in terms of the design very very nice um i would put that in the money category when it comes to the design cost over spot though it used to not be that horrible right now it is abysmal uh you're looking at a spot price of around $25, give or take, at the time of the recording of this video. And this coin now is going for low 40s, maybe upper 30s, some places even like mid 40s, which is astronomically high. That definitely puts us in the danger zone. Mintage, this coin also has been minted to oblivion. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these coins each year. Um, that kind of works against it in terms of the rarity of the coin. Um, and the hype there's not too much hype on american silver eagle releases unless you know if you're talking about when the type one switched over to the type two that was that was a lot of hype because the coin you know has been essentially the same in terms of the reverse for years and years and years i'm gonna have to put the american silver eagle in terms of the design which is classic um oh man people are gonna say unpatriotic um it's the meh category for me um i'm also thinking about my global audience now here's the deal meh because there are so many silver coins that you could be buying that have a better value um if the price of these coins dropped significantly and we're trading at two dollars 250 over spot i would say that would help it get into the not too shabby category guys again the the the, the design in my opinion for the type one and obviously the obverse is is money but you know when you're talking super high mintages no hype whatsoever and the cost over spot is ridiculously high we're going to put that in the meh category and i put that across the board um classic designs but you know again it, yeah it's a recognizable coin but being that there's so many other options right now a lot of people in the stacking community say silver silver i don't agree with that but in this situation when you can get other coins that have a tremendous amount of value uh i would put this in the meh category sorry guys um i'm gonna skip over a couple i just want to come over here to the kangaroo 
the kangaroo, in my opinion, is uh, dog shit. Um, this coin essentially has... I, I looked up some of the... Let's see. I couldn't really find the, uh, the, the mintages on the kangaroos, but the design doesn't change. You, yeah, you get cost over spot is low, but the design, in my opinion, there's nothing really going for it. You got that radial design there with the, um, what is it? The hopping battle rabbit that some of us call these things. Um, they don't do it for me. The design, in my opinion, is just lackluster. Cost over spot is tremendous work. You know, that's tremendous for it. But mintage, you know, I know that this is like the uh, an official coin for uh, Australia. Um, and there's no hype on this coin whatsoever. Y you're going to be trading these when you go to sell them. You're basically playing the spot game here. That goes in the danger zone. Um, let's look at another coin here. Um... Philharmonics, I'm going to put in the caution. Same reason. Nothing really too crazy for the design. Um, the, the cost over spot is really low. High mintages. No hype whatsoever. Um, but I think that at least the design has a little bit more going for it uh, than the kangaroo. You've got on the other side here the Oregon. Um, so we're going to put this in the caution zone because, again, you this is like a coin that's really not collected. It's more for stacking. We're going to put that in the caution zone. Um, however, let's go with the Britannia. Now, hear me out on this thing. The Britannia's design, it doesn't really change um, either. Recently, it did. It incorporated all these different um, you know, security features. You've got the uh, lenticular design of the Trident, the lock, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, the euro i think there was like three things I i'm forgetting or was it just the trident and the lock whatever there's a lenticular design on here that um is a really nice security feature uh it's just a really well done coin beautiful design you get a lot of bang for your buck because of that um they tend to hold their value a little bit more they don't command a really high premium so yeah you do kind of have that um, you know, that spot game that you're working with, if you will. But just because the design, in my opinion, is just really done well, in my opinion, also, it's better than this. And I think that that's then definitely helping it out. So we're definitely going to put this into the not too shabby category. Um, Libertads. All right, guys, Libertads design. We're going to go with this one right here. Money. Um, very, very classic design. Very, very classic. Classic design. Beautiful. Cost over spot is quite high. However, uh, the mintages also are very, very high. We're looking at Libertad's having mintages of anywhere between, I looked at the census of these things, 67,000 minted, I believe, in 1998, to like 2.4 million were minted in another year. Um, however, here's the thing with these. A hype around Libertad's, regardless of when they release regardless that the design just uh r more or less stays the same they have a tremendous resale factor to them people love libertads i like them but as a person that is a bullion dealer um i look at it for the design aspect but i do look at it because of the hype and you know can you flip it for a significant amount of profit you can and so therefore it goes in the money category as does the newer libertad now i'm leaving off proofs i'm leaving off the fractionals and all that stuff because that's we're going to be here forever so we're going to put the libertads in the money category um oh krugerands if there was something below danger zone like the dog crap zone i'd put the krugerands in the dog crap zone i really really dislike krugerands both silver and gold i'll do a follow-up video to this talking about gold krugerands but i just think that they're trash um nobody gives a rat's behind over these coins maybe with the exception of like two people they were referenced in i think lethal weapon and they were also referenced in the sopranos a couple of times other than that krugerands are a couple of thumbs down um you could get other coins that have you know maybe a little bit more of a premium but they have more things going for it i'm putting this in the, the danger zone if i could put it in below the danger zone i would krugerands are dog shit stay away from them um 
All right, this is where it's starting to get a little bit interesting. All right, we're going to move Marvel. I mean, no question, the Marvel coins are going right into the money category. They have a mintage of 50, 50, 50,000, but there were nine in the release. They commanded um, tremendous resale. They have, even though the mintage is a little bit higher with the 50,000, the thing that has a lot of people that still get hyped over the coins is the fact that you've got Marvel fans. So they might not necessarily even be silver fans. They might not be coin collectors, but you can get them as gifts for somebody. Somebody likes Thor, you get them a Thor coin. There's a lot going for the series. 50,000, I feel, was possibly the sweet spot because the series, it, it started in like six, 2016 with Spider-Man or 2017. I think it was 2016. But Spider-Man no, now goes for like $200, $210. But this is the money category. Mintage was just right. Cost over spot was pretty good when these were released. Hype was strong. That goes in the money category. Quaka, this thing is freaking stupid. Um, there's a, a few coins that I'm going to put right here. This is from like Perth Mint. We're going to put these all right here. These like semi numismatic things. Um, let's get these up here. We're going to get them up, up in the uh, rankings here in just a moment. But Quaka, it's like a rodent that's smiling at you. Um, you're looking at a mintage of 25,000. I think that this was just, it's a coin that came out that people are kind of looking at it. They don't know whether or not to take it seriously. Um, it's just one of those coins that the Perth Mint put out there. If I'm mistakenly saying Perth, and it's a different mint, obviously you guys are going to correct me in the comments. But the Quaka, in my opinion, there's no hype to it. The design changes every year, which you know is a good thing but it's just a wonky looking animal it just doesn't make any sense unless it's just a really popular coin in australia but i'm gonna stick that over there in the caution now the the swans the swans they could either be in the money or the not too shabby category here's the issue with the swans i'll put it in the not too shabby category problem i have with the swans is that the the design is great Okay, we're not going to ding it on the design. It changes year over year. Um, the mintage is low, 25,000. Hype, there's really not a lot of hype. It's not like you see people posting about the swans. Like, oh, the 2023 swans just came out. I got to get a whole tube of it. Nobody seems to really care about it. The issue that I have with it is the cost over spot. This commands a tremendous premium over, over spot. And because of that, I can't put it in the money category. If this traded for a little bit below what they currently do, like if spot, let's say right now is 25, I would argue that these would release at around 33, $34. If it was in the low thirties, then you would have a home run coin. So we're going to put it in the not too shabby category. Brumby. I'm going to go with the same, same reasoning as the swan. A uh, little bit costly. Uh, also, you know, the hype, there's not so much hype over this coin, 25,000. It's like the same type of semi-numismatic thing that they were going for here. Now, the Dolphins, same thing. It could be money, could be not too shabby. It's kind of an in-between. So these three here are kind of like in between the money and the not too shabby category because the resale of these coins is tremendous. Uh, if you look for the bottlenose Dolphins, man, they go for quite a bit. They're going for... I saw some sites listing them for $100. So this coin right here is uh, a pretty solid coin. These three, not money because they're not like Grand Slam home runs, but they're they're pretty solid. Um, all right, the koalas. The koalas we're going to put in the not too shabby category as well. Uh, the reason being, let's take a look here. Uh, oh, I misspoke. The quokka has $30,000. Um, let us see. Koalas, they range anywhere between three hundred to five hundred thousand. They're in the not too shabby. Mm. That mintage definitely dings them. All right, we're gonna go down into the mech category here. Um, you got a couple of things that work for it. Now, when I'm saying meh, the mech category means like if you were to buy it, hold on to it for a little while, and go to resell it, you probably would make a little bit of money on it. You're not doing anything astronomically amazing with this coin. But uh, the design changes every year, so it's fun to collect. If you're somebody that wants to get into collecting coins um, and you want to collect a series that's relatively inexpensive and you want to go capture all the back dates, this is a good one for you. Um, they recently revamped their 
design. They did this too with the Kookaburra, which I'll talk about in a minute, but they changed the font on it. They, you, they kind of gave it this updated style, um, but they would be in the met category. Now, the, the, the Kookaburra, I'd put in the not too shabby category. It's a popular coin. Um, it's a popular series. A little bit more expensive if you want to try to go get the backdated coins. Some of them go for you know a hundred plus dollars. But it's a it's a cool bird. Um, they I forget the mintage on these. They're quite high if I'm not mistaken. A couple hundred thousand at least each year. But the design changes. Um, you do seem to see not so much hype, but people do uh, pick up. The new releases when they drop you do tend to get more hype with the gold uh kookaburras which i'll do another video for down the road pandas we're gonna go in the meh category people like pandas but a lot of people have issues being that they are a chinese minted coin the other p problem that people have is that in 2017 if i'm not mistaken i always get the year mixed up 16 17 they changed from a one troy ounce silver coin to 30 grams a lot of people at least in the united states got pissed off that they did this they were like they're trying to really you know stick it to the united states um i don't think that that's the case i think that they're just switching to the metric unit i don't uh, but whatever i'm gonna put this in the met category they do okay with resale premiums tend to be a little bit higher over spot you have a little bit of a better selection with these coins in terms of like the return that you'll get on them backdate pandas are expensive i think that this started in 1986 if i'm not mistaken uh but meh you'll make your money back you'll do okay if you buy them danger zone uh should i put in star wars coins uh, guys crazy enough i'm putting them in the mech category the reason being is that they keep on minting freaking darth vader they keep making darth vader they did a darth vader coin when they first released i think in 2017 then they released a stormtrooper all right but then they released a darth vader and then they released, I think it was like a clone trooper. Then they released a Darth Vader. And then it was a Boba Fett. And then a Darth Vader. And then another Darth Vader. It, it's, it is infuriating. And the problem is I keep buying the stupid flipping things because I feel like I'm committed to the series. I bought since the beginning. So I have to keep the series going. But geez, Louise, they keep on minting Darth Vader which puts that in the meh category. Meh. Beskar bars. Uh, we're going to do in the not too shabby category, even though these have a crazy mintage of 50,000. I'm talking about the one ounce bars, the 10 ounces, which I happen to have. I've got a 10 ounce bar here. These had a mintage of, I think the first year, correct me if I'm wrong, a thousand, maybe it was 3000. And then the next year, it was like 5,000. The mint upped it. So uh, we're going to go in the not too shabby category for the one ounce bars because even though the design stays the same from the two years, and most likely they'll probably do another year, um, even though the design stays the same, people like the Beskar bars. They think they're cool. It's a cool shape. It's a government minted coin and they hold a tremendous premium uh and resale value they hold their values not tremendous premiums they they're released usually not too terribly over spot and you have to look at that from the lens of how much can you get back when you hold it and resell it down the road next time they release these beskar bars if they do i'll probably end up buying multiple tubes this last time i think i only bought a couple tubes this go they sell out quickly this go around i'll probably do anywhere between three to five tubes which would be you know 60 to 100 of these coins so anyway these are my rankings of these semi numismatic and uh bullion grade silver coins i'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with some of my assessments and others will agree let me know in the comments down below how did i do